Good morning, Floss Tube. I'm Malva, and this is Stitching with Malva. Thank you so much for stopping by and watching my video today. If you're new here, you are most welcome, and I hope you find something that you like, see, and enjoy. And if you're returning, thank you so much for returning to watch my videos. It really means a lot to me, and I appreciate it. I also really love um, comments and chit-chatting with people in the comments, so please feel free to uh, comment or start a chat. I'd really like that as well. And I do want to give a special thank you to everyone that said such kind words. Um, last video, our dear cat Hades had passed away, and my husband and I really appreciated everybody's kind words and thoughtfulness. So um, again, I can't say enough how kind and wonderful people are on Floss Tube. So I thank you very much for that. Just a little bit about myself if you're new. I live in Canada in the city of Edmonton in the province of Alberta. I've been stitching for probably over 20 years. Um, and I'm not really new to floss tubes. I've known about floss tubes since its very early days before it was even called floss tube, but I just came back to it because it seemed like a good time to jump back in and meet some new people. So July was a month where um, I just did whatever I wanted. Um, I was still grieving from the death of our cat and I didn't want to put any pressure on me. So there is a lot to show you. <laughs> I have a huge pile, which I'm a little bit scared that it might topple over. So please make sure you have a drink or a snack um, because there's going to be lots to show. So today my mug is this one. It says, good morning, I see the assassins have failed. So when I bought this, I thought that was pretty funny. So. Again, I'm just having a cold brew coffee because it is still quite warm. And the thought of drinking something hot right now is not in the cards. So let's just get started here. I'll bring up my board. So we're gonna start with my finishes. So the first finish, I showed this last time just as a width but it's part of my everyday calendar. So I finished number four. And this is all done on perforated paper. And I also started number one and I finished that as well. So I'll talk about what's next um, when I get into my plans section. Okay. The next thing I finished was my angel from my stand-up nativity. So there she is. She has a few beads on her. Um, I finished the back stitching and I left her face till the end. I'm very happy with how she turned out. She's just beautiful. And this is done on um, a 30 count linen. And then I saw this on Etsy and I was like, oh, this is so sweet, I have to have this. So I started and finished it all in one month. So it's a little, I'll make it into a little pillow for St. Patrick's Day. But that was very, very fun to do. And then this one was a whip, but I ended up finishing it. I showed this in my um, whip parade, but now it's all done. So I didn't use the colors that were in the pattern. It actually had the border as um, different colors of blue, and I just wanted to make it a little bit uh, simpler. So. I just used some hand-dyed floss for the border as well as for the words. So I'm very happy with how this turned out. And then the next one I showed as a whip as well last time. And I was able to finish it. 
It's Barbara Anners, Anna's, Anners, <laughs> Barbara Anna's Mad Hatter. It turned out so fantastic. I'm very, very happy with this. I'm thinking since it's nice and round, I might um, put it in a hoop. So I'll wait until I have another one finished, which I'll be showing you shortly and I'll just buy two hoops at the same time probably just on Amazon would be the best but there she is so much fun to do I highly highly recommend any Barbara Anna's patterns this is the first one I did and I am hoping to do more okay then I did some patriotic ones so I'm just, I finished this one, but I'm showing you how I changed the pattern on it. So it's very hard to find patriotic uh, Canadian patterns um, because there just really isn't any. So there's lots of American ones. So I was like, you know what? I can switch it out. So this is what the original pattern looked like. And then here's what I did to it. And there's mine. So I could have just put free on the flag because obviously Canada is free as well, but I just thought to do something a little bit more playful. So I just put, oh, Canada. So there's that, that's super cute. And I love these sheep so much that I actually bought the Easter one and the St. Patrick's Day one. So I just ordered the St. Patrick's Day one, so I can't show that to you, but in my haul, I have the Easter one, so you can see that. Okay, and then this one was another one that was um, more American, but I made it into a Canadian truck. So there it is. So obviously I switched the flag, and then this little banner thing was in red white and blue and I just took out the blue because our colors are red and white in our flag so this turned out super sweet so I'm very excited about how that turned out and then this one I didn't have to change at all because Shannon Christine um, did a Canadian cup which I'm so happy for so there's a big moose in there, which is funny, and a bowl of poutine, because I guess that's what Canada is known for, is poutine and moose. So that turned out so sweet. So I'm gonna make all of these into uh, little pillows. And when Canada Day comes up next year, I'll have things that I can decorate with. Uh, next up was some nativities that I showed, I think, in my haul last month, but this is the Holy Family. I just used some hand-dyed floss. They, the pattern actually had everything in black, and I don't really like stitching black, so I thought hand-dyed floss would give a little bit more interest. So there's that. And then I finished the Shepherds. started and finished them. And again, this was uh, Karen Water Lilies, I think called Rye. And then the Three Kings, I haven't finished yet, but you'll see those when I show my whips. This is another one that I finished. I showed this to you before as a whip. So it's Halloween time, so I do have a little clock that I'm going to put it into when it comes October. So you can see that. So I do my Halloween stitching on a Friday, so this just took one Friday to do from um, being a whip. So I just had to sit down and do it. Okay, so those are all my finishes. And now we're on to whips. So the first whip up is uh, the nativity one. Sorry, I didn't take it out of the package. So 
The only one that I have left to do is the Three Kings. So, so far I just have one king done. Then I worked on Coco Time. There's a Coco Time, a Tea Time, and a Coffee Time. I've already done the Coffee Time, and I do have the Tea Time um, kitted up. I just haven't started it yet. So what I decided to do was actually do them all on the same fabric. So Coffee Time was done on a 30 count baby's breath. So I'm doing all of them on a 30 count baby's breath. Okay. And this is what it looks like. So this one shouldn't take too long. The motifs go pretty quickly. Oh, and what's interesting about this pattern, so you see on the top there is um, like cinnamon sticks, but there's actually a pattern that you can do like little um, alcohol bottles. So I'm going to do that instead because uh, I think that'll be more fun. Okay, and then this was part of my haul that I was going to show you, but I've already started this. So this is from Satsuma Street, Ring-a-Ding Santa. Satsuma Street kits are so much fun to do. Uh, all the bright colors that Jody chooses, like they're just such a fun stitch. And this still has the needle on it and some thread. this is how much I've gotten done. So I've got the whole bell done and just working on um, his jacket, I guess that would be. Okay, and then I started on Happy Nativity Day. Now, I did make a mistake in the border. <laughs> what a shocker. I always make mistakes in the border. But I didn't find out until I was like here that I made a mistake. So I missed one stitch. I miscounted it. Even though I felt I counted like four times, still miscounted. So I'm just going to um, keep going and just make slight adjustments. It won't be noticeable at all. There's that. And then I did some work on Marshmallow Row. I completed another bunny. Ooh, I'm so nervous about this pile falling over. We're doing okay stuff. So I finished the S bunny. And again, I changed all the colors I wanted to use hand dyed floss. So I just kept sort of more pastel -y colors and um, like fun, fun colors and um, just chose from my stash. Okay, and then every Friday I work on a Halloween one. So uh, the Halloween whip that I'm working on right now is When Witches Go Riding by Prairie Schooler. And I'm pretty far on this, but still have a ways to go. It's basically just the bottom when I show you just all that one color of all the 
the ground. So, and then the back stitching. But there isn't that much back stitch. But yeah, all of this ground, which is basically like full coverage, all one color. So once I have this one done, then I'll just pick one of my other uh, Halloween whips and I will just continue to do those. So every week I'm working on a Halloween one and Christmas one and a monthly calendars one. I've just found that works really well for me that I'm actually um, making progress. Okay, so on Saturdays I work on um, my monthly calendars. So I've already finished the one. So this is my everyday calendar that's going to look like this. So I think now I'm going to work on this blank one. And uh, I've changed all the colors. So like this one, let's see. Oh, I probably won't be able to find it in my huge pile. Oh, here it is. I changed, like they have it green, I changed it to orange and uh, like a red. So I just went through my DMCs and chose colors. So I actually can't remember what I chose for this one, but it's definitely not the blue and green. Okay, and then I'm doing um, monthly floral postcards and I'm working on March, which is daffodils. And I finished February's, which were violets. This is a big piece of fabric. I'm doing it all in one piece of fabric and then I'm going to cut it and um, turn it into pillows. So there's February all done and there's just the start of March. And I work on this on a Saturday. Okay, then on Sunday, I work on Christmas things. So, um, show you my stocking. This is definitely a channel favorite. Um, I know some of you actually subscribed to me because you saw this stocking. Um, and a couple of you have actually done the stocking. So, thank you for sharing that with me. That was exciting to see uh, that other people really love Santas as much as I do. So what I really worked on uh, was back stitching. Oh, it's a big one. So I worked on back stitching um, on this. I back stitched all of this Nutcracker Santa, and then I did all of the back stitching here. So this Sunday, I'm going to work over here and do the back stitching, do this guy, finish up this guy, and then I'll start um, cross stitching again, just because obviously I don't want to leave all the back stitching till the end. But it's just so great how much they pop once the back stitching comes up. So there's that. And then I also work on my stand-up nativity. So I'm going to work on a shepherd next. So I'm going to show the pattern way back here, two seconds. Um, that's what he's going to look like. So I'm going to start him on Sunday as well. And then um, plans. So I'm going to do plans a little bit differently. It's over half the year done. So um, I thought I would change things up a little. Let me just take a quick sip here. So before what I do is I would theme my month. So one month would be Easter. Another month was just cats. May was cats. Um, but I decided to do something a little bit different now. Um, instead of just doing the themed because then like if I just worked on cats, then that's all I would work on for that one month. And then the rest of the year I wouldn't work on them. So instead, what I've done is I'm going to have a whip that I work on every day for half an hour or more. I call it my 37. Um, I'm going to work on a new start if I want to. So there could be one or two new starts. And then I'm going to work on a lady. 
So I have some fancy ladies, so I would like to get more work done on them. So I'm setting aside a week to do that. I'm going to work on a mill hill because I have a drawer full of mill hills. And if I don't set aside time to do them, they'll never get done. So a week on mill hill and then uh, whips. So I can choose one, two, three, however many whips I want. Um, I think what I'll try and do is work on some whips that are close to being done so I can finish them and then some other whips that need some love. And then a seasonal one. So that can be any season whatsoever. It could be St. Patrick's Day, Valentine's Day, whatever. Um, and they'll get a week on that. So I will, um, if I decide on new starts, then I'll sort of do those um, whatever week I want to. But the other ones I'll give a full week to. So let's talk about plans now using that new sort of um, idea that I have for how I'm going to proceed till the end of the year. So my whip that I'm going to work on for this month is Miaui Lisa. So I started her and I want to continue with her so I added her in. And this is where I've gotten to. I just left her in the queue snap because um, I'm going to be working on her this month, so there's no point in taking her out. Okay, and then my seasonal one that I chose is a new start for me, and I've had this forever. It's Winter Reindeer by Dimensions. I was going to tell you what year it is, but it's so hard to find the year. It's one of the older ones. I haven't really seen anyone do this one. And I just started it, so there's a very, very meager start here. Just his tail. The Ada is so hard to work on, but I'm going to, you know, not complain about it. But it is very stiff. I am not used to working on stiff Ada. Normally I change out the Ada on the kits because I don't mind working on Ada. That's not the problem. It's um, the stiffness, but I didn't have any 18 count Ada and I just really wanted to start this. So I was like, use the material you were given, Melfa. Okay. And then the lady I'm going to work on for this month is actually a Mill Hill kit and it's called Ocean Song. So this is a full coverage. She's, um, what, five by seven? Yeah, five by seven. And she's not done on perforated paper, she's actually done on Ada, but this Ada is nice and soft. So she's quite easy to work on. And it's a 14 count, so it's like a dream. So this is where we're starting on her. She was a whip, but I, she actually didn't show her in the whip parade because I didn't show any of my Mill Hill kits in my whip parade, so this is the first time you're seeing her. So this is the starting point. Okay, and then the Mill Hill kit that I'm working on is a buttons and beads, and they're like five by five and a quarter and this is called which way because I thought it would be a good time to get this Halloween one done because it's going to be here before we know it hey and this is where I'm starting on that so I've already done some of the beading as well. Sometimes I don't wait till the end. I just do the beading as I go. Okay, and my new start for this month is something I showed last month, I think, in my haul. 
Oh, I'm going to take it out of the bag. Sorry, I've just been so lazy not taking things out of the bag, but this one is in a double bag. So sorry for the crinkles. It's Trophy Husband. I thought that was funny. So that's my new start. And then for my everyday stitch, like half an hour or more, I'm going to work on Every Child Matters. And here's my starting point for that. I've basically got, I don't know, like 50 more stitches to finish that circle. It's all full coverage and then I'll do the outside. So I want to get this done by the end of September because that's when the Truth and Reconciliation Day is at the end of September. Okay, so sorry I didn't take any before photos, but I wasn't that organized. So next month I will have before photos to pop in so you actually have a better idea of how much I did. So I do have um, quite a bit of haul to show you because apparently I'm a shopaholic and I like to shop. So I have a few patterns to show you. Okay, I really, really love Noah's Ark patterns, um, but I only buy ones that are different or interesting to me. I don't buy every Noah's Ark pattern. Um, I definitely don't buy the ones that are like baby birth announcements or anything like that, but they have to be sort of different and interesting to me. So I got these ones off of eBay, and this is a Noah's Ark sampler. So I don't think I would do the whole thing. Like I think I would take this part off and I probably wouldn't do the border because I don't like borders. <laughs> well, I do like borders. I don't like stitching borders. I guess I should say that. And this one is called Good Tidings of Joy and it's actually Santa with the Noah's Ark. So I thought that one was quite interesting. And it's just two colors, so, um, or maybe three. No, just two. So that couldn't be any easier, but it's quite big. But again, some of my Noah's Ark stuff is just for my collection because I do collect them. So I don't necessarily, I'm not gonna necessarily do all of them, but there's definitely um, some that will just stay in my collection because I do like the patterns. Okay, and then um, some other ones that I got are Rabbits in the Round, because I do love Easter, so I'm very drawn towards Eastern patterns. That one's cute. I got a couple of buttons and beads. So this one I've looked at for a very long time and finally got it. It's called Fairy Garden. I just thought that was so sweet. And then this one um, is called Luck of the Irish. I'm just, for whatever reason, just really into St. Patrick's Day stitching right now. So <laughs> apparently I'm going to be very well decorated on St. Patrick's Day. That. And then I finally gave in and got um, the Lizzie Kate stand-ups that I talked about a couple videos ago. So I got Vinnie Von Fang. He's great. And I got Betty Broomstick, who literally comes with a broomstick. So, but I was like, oh, I think about them all the time. They're on my wish list. I might as well just get them. And then the other Satsuma Street one that I got was called Lolly Claws. There we go. I love that big sucker that she's holding. So she's very cute. And then the last one I got, I think this was either 
eBay or Etsy, and it's called U Hunt. U Hunt, I guess. And it's one of those sheeps dressed up as a bunny. Okay, so that is everything, which was quite a bit. So I hope you have a great day. Again, thanks so much for watching and please feel free to leave a comment. Bye now.